And the winner and book passage to Indianapolis. In purple LSU, they'll get the first opportunity, and here's their senior point guard, Daryl Mitchell. Texas starting out in man-to-man. -man. This is a team, Texas, that plays a lot of zone. I think you can expect them to play some 2-3 zone in this ballgame. Kaz and Mitchell, the freshman, unable to hit the three-pointer. The long rebound out to P.J. Tucker, and he takes a deep and a blocking foul against LSU. And the uh, Longhorns were looking for goaltend as well. They don't get that call. John Cal coming in and saying that ball was on the way up when it was swept off the glass. And Tasman Mitchell in missing that perimeter shot. If he had just followed that shot, he would have had a second opportunity. But instead, Texas able to run out on the break. And P.J. Tucker, you are not going to find a stronger inside player than P.J. Tucker. Big 12 player of the year. His name is Anthony Leon Tucker. Where does he get the PJ? Well, as a kid, he was Pop Jr. It's a alphabet team. PJ Tucker, AJ Abrams, JD Lewis on the Texas roster. Tucker has the first point of the game. And as Tigers bring the ball up court, congratulations to Winona State. You saw earlier defeated Virginia Union for the Division II NCAA championship. LSU running a little screen for the screener action, and Mitchell leaving his feet to pass. That's always dangerous against a good defensive team. Gibson, Paulino, the star who hit the shot at the buzzer to beat West Virginia, said it's the first time in his entire career he's hit a shot right at the end of the game to win it. Has trouble saving, but gets it into Aldridge, who's got a good touch from out there. 15-footer for Aldridge. He hit several against West Virginia. What a sweet shooting big man he is. A turnaround jumper. He is developing a little hook shot inside. He has got every skill you would want in a big guy. He was 11 for 15 on Thursday night from the floor. Inside the big baby, his first opportunity, and he's stripped by Paulino. Trying to get it to a teammate, and finally... The call is the other way to Texas. No, a timeout. He finally got a timeout while rolling on that 310-pound body of his. Really going, it's Texas with a 3-0 lead. Final four, the lowest seed ever to make it to the national finals. And there's a turnover, and Polino picks it up for Texas. And the Longhorns take advantage quickly, 5-0. LSU, Dick, has looked young in the early stages of this ballgame. They did not look young against Duke. Right now, they look like a bunch of freshmen and sophomores. There's the only senior, Daryl Mitchell. He goes up with his first shot, and he's way over the top. Comes out, and it's Temple who hits inside the arc. Garrett Temple, who is their top defensive player, hits the first bucket. Garrett Temple had a defensive game like I have not seen in this tournament against Duke. Shutting down J.J. Redick, sticking with him for the entire 40-minute period. What was he, 3 for 18, Redick? 3 for 18. Every shot a challenge shot. He might have had only one or two open opportunities. No whistle. Gibson is short on the jumper, and Buckman will give Texas another chance. Right back to Gibson. Long this time. And it's a Big Baby who pulls in the rebound. Out to Temple from outside the line. Buckman. Buckman, who was on that Texas team that made it to the Final Four three years ago. He played some as a freshman. Polino was on the team, didn't get in the game in the semifinals when they lost to Syracuse. Buckman hits the three, and it's 8-2 Texas. That's the strength of Brad Buckman. He can step away. He's an outstanding rebounder, but can also shoot the three. Not a high percentage shooter, but he draws a big guy away from the basket. A different lineup. This year for Texas, they've gone with the three bigs, with P.J. Tucker having to play out on the perimeter. Something new for him, but something Texas is now used to. They talk about team chemistry, and coaches around the country do, but this LSU club, young, they're all from the Baton Rouge area. Four of them are the five starters. Baton Rouge high schools, they've known each other since kids. Tasman Mitchell, too strong. Lots of adrenaline flowing in these uh, young Tigers. Batted away by Thomas. Capital of Louisiana in many ways with all the tragedies of Katrina. They're playing for their school and their state. Governor of the state congratulated Brady after the win over Duke. There they are, 50-mile radius, the six top players for 
the Tigers. They're homegrown. Darrell Mitchell has his first foul. Gibson, a 69% shooter from the line as uh, Mike Williams, the 6'7 sophomore, Camden, Alabama. He came off the bench, scored 9.7 rebounds against West Virginia, was 4 for 4 from the floor. Well, this is one of the guys that Rick Barnes needs to get going. Daniel Gibson, one of his last 10 shots since the Longhorns have hit Atlanta. He only had three points against West Virginia. Did not play well offensively, but solid defensively. Big Baby shows you 310 how well he can handle the ball. Mitchell will fire a three. Oh, my! That's Thomas up high to slam down the follow. Incredibly explosive. The best offense for LSU thus far has been a missed shot. Aldridge. Cleared by Thomas. Boy, there is an extra step on Tyrus Thomas's ladder. Oh, he's going to fire from outside and can't hit. On the battle, it's Aldridge and uh, still scrambling. And LSU comes up with the ball and then throws it away right back to Aldridge. And one of the Texas Longhorns is injured, and it's P.J. Tucker batted away again. And Tucker holding his hand in that scramble. One of the players may have fallen on it, and here he goes to the bench. This could be critical for the Longhorns. Their top player, the player of the year in the conference, Big 12, and he was writhing in pain holding that right hand. He goes down. It looked like it was the left wrist. I'm not exactly sure what got hit, but that, that hand stuck underneath. You can see he goes, goes down to the Here's floor, the reaching in with his right hand. But it looked like he was holding his left wrist or left thumb when he walked over to the bench. Yeah, he uh, looks to be the left thumb that he's manipulating. Timeout. About four and a half into the game. And Texas jumps out to a five-point lead. On P.J. Tucker's wrist, Bob Wenzel. Dick, he sprained his left thumb. No previous injury. Trainer says he'll be back shortly. Thank you, Bob. Inside, first points for big baby Len Davis. And much better movement by LSU coming out of the timeout early on. They've been standing around too much offensively. They just need to get untracked to get back into this game and feel a rhythm. A.J. Abrams into the game for the first time. The 5'10 freshman, number five. He produced some good minutes in this tournament for Rick Barnes. Colino. This is Abrams. You can see the athleticism of this LSU team defensively. They can really stay in front. With four seconds on the clock. It's Williams underneath to collect the offensive rebound. Tipped out. Scramble. Watch it. And Tasman Mitchell is going to be called for a foul on the collision with Abrams. That'll be two on no, his first. LSU I thought they were going to be in our lap there for a moment, Jay. You didn't even stand up to protect me. You're supposed to catch him. <laughs> well, Tasman Mitchell, you give him credit for hustling, going after it, but he really didn't have much of a chance at that ball because he didn't have the angle. Probably an unnecessary foul by the freshman. You're seeing the offensive rebounding strength of this Texas team, and overall in the three tournament games, there are 20 plus per game over their opposition. Aldridge can't hit that one, and that'll be Williams a little too aggressive going up for the rebound for Texas. And P.J. Tucker, that's good news, returns to the lineup for Texas. Now, Dick, you mentioned the offensive rebounding strength of this Texas team. That means that LSU is going to have to have a concerted effort of all five guys, not only to go to the defensive glass, but to box out as well. This is a team that at times can just jump with you for rebounds because they're such superior athletes. They have to box against this Texas team to have success. And off by Davis to Mitchell, and then Davis gets his position inside against Williams. They double-team him. That big 310-pounder is so agile. 9-8 the score. But how about the smarts of Glenn Davis turning away from that double-team? Abrams came when he started dribbling. It looks like Texas is going to try to double-team off the dribble, and he was very aware. Tucker with that left thumb tape now, as you can see. Good defense by LSU. Clock ticking down to 10. Inside to Williams. Oh, no foul. A big bump. Yeah, there was a call. Didn't hear the whistle. 
Glenn Davis averages almost 19 points per game. Coming off that little low block screen by Tasman Mitchell, trying to get a switch if they can. But you can see Paulino comes over from the weak side on the dribble to try to double team. And Davis very intelligently turns to the baseline. He's got that nice touch. Mitchell sits down with a second foul and Darnell Lazar who came off the bench against Duke and scored 10 points in the first half replaces him and Tucker way off the mark and Davis embraces the rebound. LSU and Lazar quickly goes to work and he's denied on the block by Aldridge. L train up there to derail that attempt. The long arms and great timing of LaMarcus Aldridge. Texas now three and a half minutes without scoring a point after they jumped out to a 9-2 lead there. The advantage now just one as we're under 13 minutes to go in this opening half. Run out ball screen. Ten of the clock. Aldridge. Polino. And it's Davis another rebound for LSU. Third for him. Engaging guy, this 310 pound Davis. He played high school football tailback and nose guard at 350. Lost a lot of weight. He said he wants to get down to 285. He's tough to stop. What a beautiful play. The ball screen out top by Tyrus Thomas. Everybody worried about Thomas rolling to the rim for the lob. And then the duck in on the weak side. And when Glenn Davis gets the ball inside, he is so strong. Texas just fell asleep defensively here when Mike Williams goes over to try to pick up Thomas for that lob. Kenton Paulino's got to get down there a lot quicker to try to deny that pass. Big Baby doesn't mind the, the nickname. Didn't want to be called uh, Baby Shaq. He has a lot of nicknames. He said, just don't call me Glenn unless uh, I'm hungry. Then you can use my real name. Whatever he says. Texas is 0 for the last six from the floor. And there's a deflection by Lazar. Thomas picks it up. Usually a good passer, P.J. Tucker, but not a very good pass there. Needs to use a pass fake. Eight unanswered for the men in purple from Baton Rouge. All alone is Thomas. And up the elevator he goes. Against the 2-3 zone. Tyrus Thomas staying behind that zone and getting lost. You cannot lose him. Longhorns need a hoop. 10-0 run for LSU. Thomas pulls that one out of the air. And I guess they ruled that that wouldn't have been close enough to the basket to be a goaltend because he plucked that away from the rim. I'll tell you what he did was he got in everybody's head right there. Even if that was a goaltend, it might be worth it just to let him know. I'm here and anything you put up, I can send back. Inside to the big man. And it's out of bounds off his foot with a timeout. 11-13 left in this first half. The Tigers of LSU. Ten unanswered points. And Thomas with a exclamation mark. Zone because you've got to flatten out that zone. And Brad Buckman just falling asleep a little bit. Rick Barnes not happy with his senior. And meanwhile, Jay of Texas has gone more than six minutes without a field goal. They missed their last seven shots. Under 11 to go. P.J. Tucker outside to Abrams. And the freshman drills the three to tie to 12. A.J. Abrams had really had a nice impact on this Texas team the last half of the season, and especially in this NCAA tournament. 16 points against NC State. He had a terrific game the other night against West Virginia. Nine points, a couple of steals, and seven assists to lead Texas off the bench. This zone, you can attack it in the middle. You get it into the middle, there's skip passes available. That's right where Big Davis, Big Baby Davis is positioned. There he is. There it is, nice pass. And it's Roll, Magnum Roll, the 6'10 freshman from Freeport in the Bahamas, his first basket. You get it into the middle, whether it's the high post or a flash in the middle, it'll collapse this zone defense and you'll have some opportunities. P.J. Tucker inside, can't hit, and Davis with a loose ball for LSU. LSU looked awfully shaky to start this game. They looked their age, but right now playing beyond their years. Consensus was that their, their senior, Daryl Mitchell, their point guard and best outside shooter, would have to have a big game. Oh, look at Buckman up there to 
say no to Magnum Roll. Magnum with a blank on that one. Buckman hits the three, and the big guy at 6'8", the senior from Austin, gives Texas a one-point advantage. Boy, the definition of doing it at both ends for Brad Buckman, the fantastic block along the baseline, and then the open three. I think he was a little mad at himself for letting Thomas have the easy one. Yeah, he went and got him back in a hurry, didn't he? Uh-huh. Temple with Mitchell, Davis, roll underneath. Temple can't hit it. Battle for the rebound. Last touch by home. Officials look at each other and they say LSU ball. LSU looking middle and then immediately short corner Magnum Roll going up and Brad Buckman sending it back and then as the trailer down the floor on ball reversal. Buckman a really solid shooter when he's knocking shots down he can draw a big guy further away from the basket that's advantage Texas. Big baby Davis takes a seat on the LSU bench and Tyrus Thomas back in replaces him. You sure he just took one seat. <laughs> yeah, there is a whole section there reserved isn't there. <laughs> Temple. Well off the mark and uh, here comes Texas. The only deficiency of this LSU team. They are not a very good outside shooting team. Over four on threes thus far. Tucker yet to score from the floor. Abrams with a runner. Rims out. Mitchell the other way for LSU. And Lazar for the 10-footer. He can't hit. <laughs> Thomas, uh oh Thomas reaching for the ball. Hit Buckman in the face. And timeout will be called. No foul call. That's uh, Rick Barnes staring at the officials. Well, Tyrus Thomas taking really an unnecessary risk after this missed shot. Just trying to knock that ball away. You try not to do this as a young player that far away from the basket and clearly Brad Buckman got hit just on the wasn't top called. of the head and not yeah. in the face looks like he banged him right on the crown of the head eight minutes left in this first half Texas 15 LSU 14 and the kick ball 21 seconds on the clock and we have a timeout at the 755 mark someone's got a headache their feelings what are you feeling right now that it was a great motivational tool by the time they got back to the Texas campus every player wanted to go back to practice LSU really an underrated defensive team a lot of attention played to the ball screen and not paid to Brad Buckman just missed it Thomas with a rebound and he's not 100 percent but he said he's 97.6 <laughs> one underbody temperature it's nice to know that there's certainty in the game <laughs> there's that and guess who's on the receiving end Tyrus Thomas and that was a set play Dick a screen by Darnell Lazar on ball reversal went and picked off the low man on that zone that was just beautifully done Aldridge with a high sweeping hook not crawling and a scramble and a tie ball arrow Texas John Brady wanted to foul you can see Darnell Lazar right here he's going to go set a screen and Tyrus Thomas going to go right to the ring beautifully executed by LSU <laughs> really rattled the rim and the entire end of the Georgia Dome. Texas three of their last 16 field goal attempts. Gibson can't hit. Buckman over the back. No, they're going to call it the other way. Looks as if a roll of LSU has been ticketed. It's his first. CBS Sports Line, your destination for complete tournament coverage, bracket updates, video highlights, expert analysis. You get it all at CBSSportsLine.com. John Brady talking to the officials saying that Brad Buckman wasn't shooting the ball, but he was going in for a controlled tip. How's that for a touch? High off the heel of the rim and back down through to tie it at 16. Good start for Brad Buckman. He has eight points. Now, earlier in the season, Rick Barnes really felt that Brad Buckman was a major part of this team. He said when 
Buckman was injured in the first half against Duke when they got blown out by 31. But his team took a major step backward, and that was really the, the start of an avalanche of problems. Mitchell way outside. Didn't have much left on that shot, but lines it home. His first three and first points of the game. Mitchell really a key guy for LSU. Their top perimeter scorer, really a two guard that's been playing point all season long after Tack Minor was lost for the year. Lead shuttling back and forth on the last five possessions. Now it's LSU in front by two as Aldridge had to on paper. And the whistle. This one's going to go on Buckman. And while they walk to the other end, we'll remind you, you can win an NCAA-related prize every 35 seconds at MikeCokeRewards.com slash NCAA. Well, the real NCAA prize, you can't win it. you got to go earn it. That's the NCAA championship trophy, and all these guys want it. The Elite Eight starting today with this game to be followed. Oakland Regional, UCLA, and Memphis as Thomas... Doesn't get the bounce, and here comes P.J. Tucker for Texas. Junior from Raleigh, North Carolina. Now back outside to Daniel Gibson. Played his high school ball in Houston. His dad was a player at the University of Houston just before the Vice Slamma Jamma team. Abrams, nice pass inside to Aldridge. Rebound by Tyrus Thomas. <laughs> Again, he elevated so quickly. Big Davies uh, kneeling at the scorer's table. Oh, the court was kind of leaning away from us. <laughs> <laughs> I love it to be able to look a guy like that in the eye and say, you're a big baby. <laughs> Temple from outside. Can't hit. Tucker another rebound. And that is not Temple's game. He can hit that shot. But he is not known as a great shooter. Gibson for three. Texas leads 2019. Four points for Daniel Gibson. And whenever you take a shot that is out of rhythm or that your teammates don't expect, it's uncanny in basketball how that often gives up an open shot in transition. And that's exactly what Texas got on the other end after Temple's ill-advised shot. Texas still in that zone, and it works defensively to deny Temple. Tucker pulls up and hits the 12-footer. P.J. Tucker has his first field goal, three points in the game. Really, the last two baskets from Texas have essentially come off their defense. They didn't get steals. They got rebounds and then ran it the other way to get easy shots against an LSU defense that was not yet set but scrambling. Yeah, Brady wants to settle things and get his big man Davis back in the lineup. 421 left before the intermission. The Longhorn with a three-point lead. CBS. Texas by three. Big baby Davis back in the lineup for the LSU Tigers. And there's Davis in the paint, working on Aldridge. Aldridge with a defensive play. Good job. Texas has denied three straight times. Well, there you can see the difference between length and strength. Tyrus Thomas uh, and Garrett Temple in there to deny on the drive. Tiger, Tiger set up defensively as uh, Paulson triggers in the inbounds pass. Polino. Here's a, an advantage for P.J. Tucker. Well defended by Tasman Mitchell. So Polina pulls it back out. Plenty of time on the shot clock. Aldridge over Davis. Tipped out by Thomas. Aldridge now is one for seven in this first half. He was eight for eight in the opening half against West Virginia. But he's gotten some good looks. He's gotten the ball down in the low post, and those were shots he was knocking down against West Virginia's turnaround jumper, especially. From deep, Mitchell. Aldridge clears. Almost intercepted by Mitchell. Mitchell is just lightning quick. Buckman, good position underneath. Travel. He almost was too far under. Well, he also had Tyrus Thomas there. I think that's what caused the walk. <laughs> Just the very presence of Tyrus Thomas. 
you're going to have fun. You'll improve your game. It'll steady your game. So maybe an uh, ex-Tiger Shaq is uh, responsible for a great player against the LSU today. And here's a great player finishing once again, Tyrus Thomas. You know, Dick, all you have to do is throw the ball up by the rim. And just about anything at any height, Tyrus Thomas can go get it. You know, we asked him, how high can you jump? And he said, as high as I need to. He said he can put his entire hand over the top of the square. T.J. Tucker, that's his shot. Turn around, eight-footer. It's 24-21. Five points for Tucker. T.J. Tucker really is a power forward. Well, one 1-2-2. Two, two. Half-court trap right here by Texas, trying to slow down the advance of LSU, and they're sticking in that 2-3 zone. Jasmine Mitchell outside, and here's Ben Voog, a freshman from Florence, Oregon, his first appearance. Big Baby spinning and then almost threw it away. Well, Gibson should have had that one. Now to seven, five, Mitchell with four, with three, blocked with two, and the shot violation. Shot clock, turnover, the sixth for John Brady's Tigers. I think that annoys uh, coaches about as much as uh, any whistle. Well, especially when you're as good an offensive rebounding team as LSU, you want to make sure you get a shot up to give your offensive rebounders a chance to go clean it up if you miss. Texas playing almost a perfect half. Only three turnovers and three fouls. And the ball wedges tied up. It'll go to LSU. Tyrus Thomas has just been outstanding in the early going of this game. You throw that ball up near the rim, and Thomas throws it down with authority. And he has been really solid on the defensive end as well. It's hard to fathom not only how many shots he blocks, but how many shots he changes. I think he really gets into the heads of his opponents. They are hearing footsteps, wondering where he is. And he makes himself known in a hurry. All about being in the kitchen. He's the chef. He's the best cook on the team, and he gave us his recipes. He's uh, he's a serious about his uh, ability to cook. Big baby, look at how he's able to use that huge body, get off his feet. No chance for the defender to get at the ball. You know, and it's interesting that he's really a below the rim player, and I don't mean that as an insult. He's just a wide athlete, and look how agile he is. Really readjusting that shot to avoid the shot block, but still having the presence to be able to finish that and the strength to finish it. Completes the three-point play and ties it at 24. His ninth point of the game to go with four rebounds. Well, this LSU team so resilient. They had so many close games early on in the season, especially games against teams like UConn where they battled down to the end and just couldn't finish. Well, they have learned to finish now. Inside to Aldridge over Davis. Look at that leap by Thomas. And Thomas gets the rebound. Well, how much ground did he cover out near the top of the key? Gets back to block the shot. Moog uh, hurries a shot. Not a good one. We're in the final minute. Long pass. Wide open is Polino. And there's another case in point, Jay Billis. Off a bad shot, you get a breakaway going uh, to the opposition. Well, Ben Voog just a little bit over anxious to try to get something done. Get it to the rim. And that led to the run out for Texas. About seven seconds difference in the clocks. In the big baby. Oh, up underneath, and Aldridge there defending well gets the rebound. He really didn't need to go, Dick, to the other side of the rim. He could have stayed on the left side because he had already nudged, nudged <laughs> Lamarcus Aldridge out from underneath. Where's my Roger's Thesaurus? <laughs> It's been a uh, physically demanding and uh, injurious first half for the Longhorns. He's the third player to go to the sidelines uh, with what appear to be minor injuries. A high screen out top for Texas. And it's picked off by Daryl Mitchell. Gibson trails. And the senior steals two right at the buzzer. It's tied at 26. What a sloppy finish for Texas and uplifting for LSU. Brad Buckman with eight to lead the Horns. And Big Baby Davis with nine, the top scorer for LSU. And the presence of mind of Daryl Mitchell to get it all the way to the rim and still beat the clock. Let's go to Bob Wenzel. In the basketball team.
trying to at least to get to Indianapolis where they can complete that trifecta. Only Notre Dame winning the 1977-78 football year. They won the football title and uh, the Irish went to the Final Four and St. Louis to lose in the semifinals. It's getting close. Aldridge continues cold. One for ten from the floor. Mitchell picks up the loose ball. No advantage here. And he gets caught in midair. Buckman for Texas. Well, Tyrus Thomas is hurt. He got hit hard. Thomas coming into the tournament, of course, playing with a bad high ankle sprain. He just does get back, but not in time. And Buckman takes advantage of being alone outside to hit another three. He's got 12 points to lead all scores. Well, Buckman, when he's knocking his shots down, that can pull Tyrus Thomas away from the basket. And after getting knocked to the floor, just slow in getting back. Davis eyeball to eyeball with Aldridge. Double team, Paulino to help out. What a pass inside to Thomas. Beautiful feed from Temple. A terrific drive and terrific hands by Thomas, especially after Thomas banged that right hand. He hit our cameraman's knee when he went down underneath the Texas basket. Thomas now with 10 points to lead the Tigers, and here's P.J. Tucker. Short jumper wouldn't fall. You think P.J. Tucker was thinking about a shot blocker perhaps being there? He tried to loft that up awfully high. Just invaluable kind of eraser that Thomas presents. Kasman Mitchell continues to be hungry for a hoop. Solid rebound by Brad Buckman going after it with both hands. Davis gets down court to deflect that pass intended for Aldridge. Some poor decision making by Texas in transition. Thomas with Buckman will take the jumper and hit it. Tyrus Thomas gives LSU the lead, 30-29. Dick, I'm no doctor, but I think that hand is okay. <laughs> what an athlete he is. Here's a kid barely recruited. They had to find a scholarship for him at LSU, and because of a dismissal academically of a recruit, it was there for him. Polino. Reclaims the lead for Texas at 31-30. Six for him. Molino limping just a little bit. He tweaked that left knee, which he injured against Kansas in the Big 12 tournament. Inside. Big baby. Blocked by Aldridge. Out of bounds to LSU. That's the third block for Aldridge. Iris Thomas going after that rebound down on the floor. You can see him banging his hand and then Brad Buckman backing off him a little bit because he's not as worried about Thomas's shot. And Thomas now, a little more shot credibility when he faces up. Inside to Davis. And nice soft touch from the big man. He has 11. Back in front, 32-31 the Tigers. At the other end, the quick shot. Aldridge has it stripped by Temple. Can't bring it down. And a foul. Gibson reaching in. His first. When Glenn Davis put that ball in, it looked like Brad Buckman touched it when it was up there. I couldn't tell for sure when it comes off. No, he just touched the bottom of the rim. LSU with the basket. A moot point, 32-31. 15 into this second half. For these young guys, their dreams of a lifetime to get to the Final Four. Mitchell again misses. And Buckman again rebounds. Texas sticking with man-to-man. -man. That zone very effective in the first half. <laughs> Mitchell flies into the forecourt. And another miss from outside. Temple unable to hit the three. And if there's a weakness for LSU, it's the fact that they don't hit consistently outside the line. And... Some felt that might be the difference in the game today. They're one for nine. Aldridge, nice turnaround. He's got a sweet stroke. Tyrus Thomas and Brad Buckman going at it inside. The referee is trying to calm them down a bit. And you're right, Dick, about LSU shooting. That's why you don't want to pull the trigger on a three in transition. Texas back in front by one. The old train, Aldridge, swish. Tigers 
with the ball down by one. Winner to meet either UCLA or Memphis. And you'll see that game following the conclusion of this one. Mitchell almost tied up. Well, Daniel Gibson doing a good job on Mitchell. And Buckman too much body, says the official, and he has his second foul. And he does have a body. <laughs> He is a strong rebounder, especially on the offensive end. And Garrett Temple doing a nice job of continuing on and really running through that body contact he got from Buckman. That's what drew the foul, was his persistence. Inside to Mitchell. And Tasman Mitchell now. He's not related. Good pass to Davis. LSU by one. And Mitchell elevated, drew that defense and was able to drop it off. You don't like to see players leave the floor to pass, but Mitchell really able to drop that off nicely. Polino inside, back out to Williams, who's just in the game. There's the steal by Thomas. Gibson to beat. Will he take it all away? Yes, he will. Pretty soft touch when he's uh, racing down court at that speed. Well, he went the length of the floor late in the game against Duke for really a game ceiling dunk. And then the steal on the cross-court pass, and Tyrus Thomas has got some skills to go with that athleticism. And he's got the LSU fans on their feet. As there's a hold underneath, it'll be Tasman Mitchell, I believe, the freshman from Denham Springs, Louisiana, just outside Baton Rouge. Here comes Tyrus. And Daniel Gibson, a solid defender, just backing up a little too much. If he wanted to take a charge, he needed to take a stand a little bit further out, but that's a, a courageous move to try to take a, a charge against Tyrus Thomas. I guess he could just jump over you. <laughs> I was waiting to see if he was going to do a springboard job there, but it looked as if he, he was going to go all the way regardless. Uh, he, when he sees the rim, he goes right for it. Lazar, 35, defending Buckman into the game now as uh, Thomas gets a breather. Aldridge with Davis. Off the mark again. Aldridge doing a good job of letting the traffic clear, but that's a difficult challenge shot, and he has really struggled from the field. Two for 12 for LaMarcus Aldridge, who went for 26 points against West Virginia on 11 for 15 shooting. What a difference. Well, the problem is he's taking all turnaround jump shots and hooks. He's not getting anything where he can power it up to the rim, and now Texas back to their 2-3 zone. Nice hard pass inside and handcuffed Davis. Aldridge steals. Polino at the other end. Off to the left hand. Ripped down by Lazar. Temple. Mitchell. Not he, the shot. He hasn't uh, been able to hit those outside jumpers. And a whistle is reaching in was Temple to try to stop the progress of P.J. Tucker. And a reminder that Thursday on Survivor, one castaway could be forced to leave the game. Don't miss a new episode, Survivor Returns, regular time Thursday on CBS, America's number one network. LSU only averaging three made threes per game in this NCAA tournament. And they've pulled the trigger on too many jump shots. You can see one of ten today in the regional semifinal against Duke, two of seven. Think baby Davis sits down and so does uh, Tasman Mitchell with his third foul. Then Vug back in the freshman guard for the second time. He just sees uh, duty sparingly throughout the year. It's basically a seven-man rotation for both these teams. Way outside, Gibson, and he hits it. Long range. And Daniel Gibson ties it at 36. Well, maybe that'll get Daniel Gibson going. He's really been struggling here in Atlanta in the regional semifinal and here in the regional final. That's been the difference. Six for 11, three-pointers for Texas, one for 10 for LSU. And boom. Mitchell, that's a three. Well off the mark. Tucker rebounds. Texas on the run. Not a bad shot by LSU, and certainly the guy you want shooting it. Abrams misses the quick three, and Buckman... Fans wanted to travel. And the turnover as uh, Aldridge in the paint had slipped down just as Gibson tossed the pass. Well, a poor passing angle also by Daniel Gibson. If he had taken just one dribble toward the baseline, he would have improved that angle and would have been able to either get the ball inside or turn that corner. 
Davis returns to the LSU lineup just briefly off the court. Lazar out. Well, LSU one for 11 from three point range and it's not just the number of threes they've shot. It's when LSU has shot them. They have put themselves in some difficulty with their transition defense by taking some bad shots. So Mike Williams replacing Brad Buckman for Texas. LSU's success has been getting the ball into the middle of this zone. There's Davis. He can get it at the high post. A little tough pass for Thomas. He's able to save the ball and take the shot. And hits that again. That's a couple from that 12-foot mark. I think Daryl Mitchell thinks that Tyrus Thomas is Superman. He can just throw it up there anytime he wants, and he's going to go get it. And he's probably close to right. Eight for ten in the game. Long bomb not there for Gibson. Vu gets it for LSU. Two on two. And he'll pull it up and set up the offense. Smart play by Vu. Nothing was there. Didn't have numbers. Pull it back out. Make Texas guard. He's really the outsider on this all Louisiana Baton Rouge area team. He's all the way from the coast of Oregon. They liked his toughness in one of the camps, summer camps. Down to 10. Mitchell pulls up for a two. That's the biggest lead for LSU, four points. That's how tight the game's been. Well, how about the strength, but more importantly, the persistence of Big Baby. Ticking down to the 11-minute mark here in Atlanta. Ten-second shot clock. And that'll be on Lug. He did not have position his first foul. LSU foul. Watch Davis's effort here. Gets a position, fights for the ball, powers it home. Davis and Tyrus Thomas have combined for 31 points on 15 of 20 shooting. Texas trailing by four. The biggest lead for LSU in the game, 40-36. Texas had a seven-point lead at 9-2, to two, and then the run by LSU, and that changed in a hurry. Williams over the top from 14 feet, makes it 40-38 on his first basket. Good man off the bench. He's a McDonald's High School All-America, one of four on this Texas squad. Along with uh, Gibson, Buckman, and Aldridge. A reminder that you can vote for the Pontiac game-changing performance of this round and nearly $150,000 of scholarship contributions are on the line. Why don't you vote right now at NCAAsports.com slash Pontiac. Williams with a foul is second, and Tyrus Thomas on the line. Yeah, like Gumbo, his eyes brightened and the smile broadened. you got to start with a terrific roux. That's uh, the base. And then you take your pick. Throw it all in there and spice it up with some salt. And he said, uh, come on over. He'll have uh, not pecan pie, but pecan pie for dessert. You can make that, too. I'll tell you, you rue the day when you have to guard Tyrus Thomas. And, you know, Dick, in talking, you to, you know, talking to these LSU players, you know, it's, it's funny listening to them. They feel disrespected. You know, they feel like they've got a lot of doubters and that uh, they've got a lot of critics. And it's amazing that the chip they've got on their shoulder that they're playing with. Yeah, they just kind of, uh, even though they were 14-2 and two in the SEC, didn't get a lot of national notoriety. Nice move inside. Daniel Gibson able to hit the kiss off the glass and bring Texas within one. Texas not able to get much in the paint, so Daniel Gibson putting the ball on the floor in large measure because Darrell Mitchell gambled on that steal and left him open to drive. Temple sees an opening. Couldn't get it off to Davis. Who touched it last? Aldridge of Texas. LSU fortunate there. You can see the drive by Gibson just getting around Glenn Davis and getting it off the glass before Thomas can get there to wipe it away. Actually, really Davis, <laughs> Davis's big body, Jay, actually blocked Thomas from getting there. <laughs> And timeout called by Vug trying to inbound the ball. 9.47 left. One team goes to Andy. Cook 
two. <laughs> Wonder if he makes his own bed. LSU ball, 9.40 remaining. One point game. Into Big Baby. Right back in with the big fellow. Boy, what a smart pass by Tasman Mitchell. When Davis didn't have it, he didn't have it initially against that 2-3 zone. He just passed it back out and reposted. Really smart. 30 to 8 now in the paint for LSU and a turnover. Tasman Mitchell gets it out of trouble. No, he doesn't. He throws it away. So the pressure in the backcourt by Texas pays off. Well, that's a freshman showing through. He was getting some pressure from P.J. Tucker and Daniel Gibson. He just needs to be strong. Can't just cough that ball up in the backcourt like that. That's the big turnover as LSU has a three-point lead and an opportunity to go down for more. Gibson hits again. So Gibson has been quiet in the tournament. Comes alive here in this one. He has 12. 43 all. It's tied again. This is the seventh tie. Several lead changes beyond that. Thomas in to Davis. Blocked by Aldridge and taken down by P.J. Tucker. Texas, Texas going man-to-man -man after the make. They're going zone after a miss. Doing some business outside the Longhorns. 21 points on Trey's. LSU with only one hit from outside the arc. But they're looking to drive it against Mitchell. Buckman, another three-point try. Mitchell, the little guy, up for the rebound. Here comes the senior. He's the one they hoped would hit some threes, but not had much success in the tournament. Here's the guy that seems to score it well, Tyrus Thomas. He now has 19, a 9 for 11 shooting. Dick, those two face-up jumpers he hit from that very spot really opened up that drive for Thomas because Buckman had to get right up on him. Look at P.J. Tucker, and he's hit blocked by Thomas, and Thomas control. That's a Bill Russell type play, block and control, and send him the other way. He's just been phenomenal the two games here in Atlanta. Well, thus far, he's been the most valuable player. There's no question about it. When you challenge him, he answers that challenge almost every time with a block or a chain shot. Good defense by Buckman. Earlier in the year, Jay Billis, uh, the talk was there's this kid, a freshman down at LSU. He doesn't even know how good he is. And he really has no idea how good he is. That shot going up and the great timing, the long arms, and the explosive athleticism. Tyrus Thomas gets to the rim and finishes. In the game, he is in a seated position now. Replaced by Lazar. LSU can't afford a whole lot of time with Tyrus Thomas on the bench. He's been such a game changer for the Tigers. 19 points for him in the game. 17 for Davis. Lazar over the top and a foul. Reminder, tomorrow after 60 minutes, you won't want to miss this new episode of Cold Case on America's number one network. Tomorrow night, CBS Cold Case. Foul was on Lazar as first. Thomas continues to hydrate. And the clock continues to tick. We have seven minutes to go in this regional final. John Brady down to check on him. He knows how important Tyrus Thomas is to this team. Aldridge, fall away jumper, battle for the rebound, and it goes to Texas. Boy, Glenn Davis did a terrific job defensively. First to push out LaMarcus Aldridge further on the lane. Now the officials confer, and the overrule. It'll be LSU ball. A great timing by Davis to extend that arm and really put some great pressure on that shot. Let's see the Longhorn P.J. Tucker in the back. It did appear to touch it last. Inside it goes. Big Baby has trouble. Four men around him. He still scores. 19 for Big Baby Davis. That's what you call clearing space in the low post. And travel the call before the foul. And oh my, Rick Barnes is hopping mad over there. Rick, Rick Barnes saying that he got pushed, but Daryl Mitchell coming off a low screen and getting the ball inside to Davis. He just cleared all that space after he lost control of the ball. Look at the effort of Davis. 
And I'm sure it's frustrating it has been for coaches all season against LSU. There's so much contact with Davis, and there's contact at the other end, and it seems to be called differently. Just a different uh, human, big baby. Well, you can't punish a guy for being big and That's strong. Right. Sometimes they are, you know. Meanwhile, only one hit out of 12 attempts from three-point range for LSU, and Buckman can't hit the three, and Davis yanks down another board. He has seven. Well, LSU got away with one there. A miscommunication defensively left Buckman wide open for the three. Good side for LSU fans. They can look over the scores table, and Tyrus Thomas is ready to come back. And a frightening sight for Texas players to see Thomas coming back in the game. Davis over Buckman. Can't hit it, and Buckman elects it for the Longhorns. Here comes Texas, down by four. Paulino, fake 15-footer, and it's a two-point game. Really controlled fast break for Texas. And Kevin Paulino with the really nice controlled shot fake, one dribble pull-up. Thomas across the way, slapping his hand against the floor as if to say, come on, stop the clock, I want to get in. Five minutes to go. LSU needs to keep pushing that ball inside. 2-3 zone. And they're collapsing more and more because there's no threat outside. No one can hit. And finally they do. Tasman Mitchell hits his first basket of the game, and it's a three. And with it, the biggest lead for the Tigers in the game. Five. Way outside Gibson. Buckman. And the rebound out of bounds off LSU. Davis getting the ball inside, collapsing. Look, all five guys right around him. He kicks it out to Mitchell, who's stepping into his shot. And now Tyrus Thomas back in the ballgame. And interesting to note, Dick, Texas did not attack the rim when Tyrus Thomas was out of the game. Now that his shot-blocking presence back in, it's going to be dangerous to attack the rim. Here's Polino, a runner. He gets it back to the bank shot. And it won't fall. But it does fall in the arms of Davis and Buckman trying to strip it away. Called for the foul. His third. That's a frustration foul. It is unbelievable the amount of space that Glenn Davis carves out inside. And he goes after every rebound with both hands. Texas. Low shooting game of the year was at Oklahoma State, 33%. That's exactly what they're shooting now. And a reminder, we'll be shooting you out to Oakland for that UCLA-Memphis game, the regional final in the West. Right after this game, Texas going back man-to-man. -man. You know that they're going to pound the ball in. Thomas with Buckman backing off. Pulls up. DJ Tucker the other way. Sets up Polino. Ooh, rough foul. Uh, Thomas tried to block Polino and picks up his first foul. 50-45, the Tigers lead. 19-38 of the 50 LSU points. Here's the star of the West Virginia win, Kenton Paulino. And he has his ninth point of the game. Marcus Aldridge said yesterday that Kenton Paulino has been the Longhorns' most consistent player. He's in double figures. He said he had to admit he went back to his room in Atlanta and watched that last shot over and over again. And he'll keep it. He said, when I'm really old, like 40, I'm going to watch <laughs> I'm going to watch it again a lot. Throws it away. Thomas with the air, trying to get the ball on the wing to Temple. That's why coaches have those deep furrows in their brow. Almost even in the turnover department as well. Texas with a ball, a three-point shot away from another tie. The run-out ball screen. Inside Aldridge. Very quiet game for him over Davis. Partially hit by Davis. They wanted a foul. Well, everything he's taken, Dick, he's fading away. LaMarcus Aldridge isn't getting anything going toward the basket. That way he can't draw any fouls. And Davis has been right on him, pushing him off that low block, further out on the floor, making those shots a little bit longer, and then challenging every one of those shots. Under three minutes left, LSU with a three-point lead. 
Jasmine Mitchell in to Big Baby. Buckland trying to check him. Double team. Seven seconds. With five, it's Davis falling away, and he's short. Scramble. And look at the strength of P.J. Tucker to rip it away from two Tigers. He's got great hands and strong hands. When P.J. Tucker gets his hands on it, it's his. 11 rebounds for Tucker, although he's not contributed much uh, in the scoring column. Only five points for their leading score. This is where he can operate down on the low block. Over Tasman Mitchell and banks it in. So big play at both ends for the player of the year in the Big 12, P.J. Tucker. And the game is down to a one-point lead LSU. And fans in the burnt orange of Texas and the purple of LSU on their feet here at the Georgia Dome. Under two to go. Long range, and it's not there. Buckman is. He's fouled by Davis. I don't know why LSU insists on shooting three-point shots under pressure when they have got Davis and Thomas inside. And here's P.J. Tucker, just a bully down low. Tasman Mitchell, as good a player as he's going to be, is not strong enough to deal with him yet. And Garrett Temple really taking an ill-advised shot, especially at this point in the game. They've got to pound that thing inside where they've got the advantage. This is the point of precious possessions. 1.40 to go. And a whistle and a foul. As P.J. Tucker went up with a shot, and I think Tasman Mitchell got him for his fourth. It is four, and that sends the Longhorns into the bonus situation. Meanwhile, they have committed only four team fouls. Sometimes that works against you late in the game. It can late in the game, especially if you get down and you've got the foul to send your opponent to the line. You waste time. But with a one and one, the Longhorn star Tucker can give Texas the lead. This is the front end. And Tyrus Thomas takes down another rebound for LSU. John Brady calling out the play he wants run against Texas's man-to-man -man defense. Another game true to the dramatic scripts that have been written in this uh, March Madness 2006 tournament. Incredible. 1.15 to go. 10 on the shot clock. Six, five, Tasman Mitchell gets it to Davis, fall away with one second on the clock, he hits it. Big baby, but crying now by the fans and his support. Three-point game, less than a minute. Tucker with a bag, denied by Thomas. He can't save it, Tucker right back. Three-pointer, Polino. Back outside to Polino, 43 seconds. Knocked away. Mitchell can't save. What a scramble. Polino blocked from behind. Gibson ties oh. it up. What a sequence. My, oh, my. Tied at 52. 32 seconds left. You would have thought the excitement and down to the final second drama has been drained out of this tournament. Not so. 32 seconds left. An entire season on the line. 32 seconds left. The winner books passage to Indianapolis in the final four. This is Mitchell, their best outside shooter, although he's one for six today. We also have to watch the offensive glass, an outstanding offensive rebounding team. Davis will maneuver his way into the paint. Down to 10. There's the foul. See, now that's one foul, and they got another one that they can spend with 10.5 seconds left. And what that does takes extra time off the clock, and it also makes LSU inbound the basketball. And the Tigers, John Brady wants a timeout. To collect the inbounds pass, no. But then to maneuver, use a pick, and it'll be Temple. Now, uh, Big Daddy, why so soon? The offensive rebound. Thomas got the rebound. It goes off the side of the board. To whom? The ball got touched. It should be LSU ball. 4.6 seconds. 
surprise you that Davis threw up that long bomb? Well, they were trying to counter the foul that was going to happen. You can see LaMarcus Aldridge with that left hand partially blocking that shot. Went out of bounds. LSU will have a chance with 4.6 seconds left to go. Chasing in, then the other six. Okay, 4.6 seconds to go. And a foul yet to give, remember, for Texas. They didn't use it. Open for the win. And it's way off the mark from Temple. Buckman tried to call time, but at the buzzer, we go overtime here in Georgia. Yeah, <laughs> what did you expect out there? OT again. Every game, it seems, coming down to a final shot. Everybody going to Tasman Mitchell, leaving Garrett Temple wide open, and Garrett Temple not a good three-point shooter. And not much uh, hope there for that LSU bench. They could see the shot was off the mark. So at the end of regulation, uh, Big Baby Davis with 21 to lead all scorers. Tyrus Thomas chipping in with 19. Gibson with 15, the leading Longhorn, and Buckman with 11. Back with a five-minute overtime period, tied at 52. Well, this is really a, an entirely new ball game for both teams. You play for five for the national finals, and LSU gets the first chance. Has Mitchell, and the freshman hits the short jumper, five points in the game. LSU has stayed man-to-man -man this entire ball game, and they've had great success. Buckman in the corner, picked up by Thomas. And Aldridge cannot hold position. He started out in the middle of that lane, and Davis bumped him out just about to the corner by the time that ball went out of bounds. Four and a half to go, shot clock at 12. Polino has it stripped away by Mitchell. Davis picked it up. And Mitchell is so quick. Polino showed the ball as he tried to rip through, and Daryl Mitchell just ripped it away. Thomas lobs it into Davis. Back out on the side, Tasman Mitchell. Wide open underneath is Temple, hangs in the air and scores. Gibson and Buckman flew by, and he still had enough elevation to knock it home. Four points for him. Boy, what a pretty pass, and the jackknife move of Garrett Temple underneath. By the three generations of Temples that have played basketball at LSU. His dad, the first African-American back in the early 70s to pull on an LSU basketball uniform. Stolen. Bad pass. Tasman Mitchell. Well, P.J. Tucker stronger down in the post, but Mitchell breaking contact so he can use his athleticism to get around in front. A poor pass by Brad Buckman, the senior. The Longhorns guilty of back-to-back -back turnovers on their last two trips. This is where LSU has to be smart. Make Texas guard you get a good shot. Davis for three. This charismatic kid from Baton Rouge, he lights up the room. He's lighting up the scoreboard. He's got 24 points and eight rebounds. Boy, the great pass by Tasman Mitchell and the terrific finish by Garrett Temple. And Big Baby playing like a man. Tigers have clawed their way to a seven-point overtime lead. Through 40 minutes, the very little give and take tied, but now seven straight unanswered by LSU in overtime, their biggest lead with 2.45 to go. Gibson, is he fouled? Would be a three-point play. No foul. Boy, and give credit to Garrett Temple. His defense, spectacular, putting pressure on that shot. Didn't touch him, just got the late pressure on the shot. The long arms of Garrett Temple. First it was J.J. Redick, he shut down, and now it's Daniel Gibson. Redick will have nightmares about the way Temple smothered him. 
No hurry, but Mitchell's going to take the shot, and it's short. Buckman is fouled. Boy, you take a bad shot, you put your teammate in a bad position. The position to foul. Second foul on Thomas. Now Texas gets to walk to the other end of the floor and score points without any time going off the clock, and they've had a devil of a time scoring off this LSU defense. Now they score with no defense on them. And Mitchell shot with uh, 25 seconds on the clock remaining. UCLA and Memphis, the second half of our regional final doubleheader here on CBS. 7-10 Eastern time, the tip-off scheduled. Buckman gets a lot of iron, and the ball nestles for his 12th point of the game. He has a double-double, 12 points, 13 rebounds. Got four of the best rebounders in the country underneath if there's a miss. He hits them both. Five-point lead, 2.26 to go. And what a good pass by Mitchell to get away from that double team on the initial pass inbounds. LSU should not be in a hurry. They were to get up a shot on the last possession. Inside to Davis. He's feeling it. And the miss. Polino the other way for Texas. And you wonder what the rush is for LSU. Two minutes to go in this overtime. Polino hit from behind by Mitchell. Recovers the ball. And Buckman will fire the three. Off the mark. Last touch by Polino. Buckman has been off with his shot since the first half. You can see the scramble for the basketball. And going out of bounds off Kenton Paulino, LSU ball. 149 left in this overtime period. Rick Barnes benefiting from the youth of LSU, uh, not taking time off the clock, not milking at all with a big lead here in overtime. And lengthening the game for the Longhorns who try to rally. They still have not uh, sent LSU in the bonus. Five team fouls in Texas. Again, a quick shot, but it's good. So <laughs> Tyrus Thomas says, what's wrong with that? Well, that wasn't bad because they were attacking the defense, getting to the rim, putting Texas in a position to foul them. 24 for Big Baby Davis, 21 for Thomas Abrams. Way off the mark, and Thomas rebounds. That and Thomas is cramping up again. With 1.21 to go. That was, that was a panic shot by A.J. Abrams, and it's no time right now to panic. 21 points, 12 rebounds for Tyrus Thomas. We were watching uh, Big Baby Davis as he came down court in front of us, and he was heaving, trying to... Grab some air. These kids uh, on both sides are, you imagine the exhaustion, not only physically, but mentally in this crucial overtime period with all the season, all the dreams on the line. Uh, the emotional energy that's been expended and Tyrus Thomas coming down. And as soon as he got down with that rebound, you can see both those hamstrings cramping up to the point where he's got to go down in the lane. An area that he has owned in this game. And he's he, he, he pulled again as he tried to leave the court. LSU substitution number 35, Darnell Lazar. Tyrus Thomas went to high school at so close to the LSU campus. Uh, Rick Barnes said I could look out my window and see the playground. And no one really quite saw the talent of this young man. Redshirted last year as a high school senior, averaged 16 a game, and you know was attractive because he's obviously a great athlete, but uh, not heavily recruited at all. Well, he's just 6'7", 180. Coming out of high pass, Mitchell, and he was fouled by Gibson. Another really smart play by LSU and the senior Daryl Mitchell getting played. He was face guarded and just decided to go long. And Daniel Gibson, no choice but to foul. Third foul on Gibson. Not much pressure on the ball, able to throw long with the ability to see over. The senior Mitchell is a 75% free throw shooter. 
extends the Tiger lead to eight. And how about the leadership job that Daryl Mitchell has done all year long? Was really a two guard, a scorer at the guard position. And when Tack Miner went out for the rest of the season, Daryl Mitchell went to the point and has led these young Tigers to the brink of a final four. A nine point lead. Texas has to hurry now with 113 left. Abrams for three, and the freshman Cooley hits the bottom of the well, 63-57. When I thought Daniel Gibson stepped out of bounds here, and he did. He stepped right out of bounds, right in front of John Cal, and he didn't see it. The bench with his cramping. What a remarkable feat should LSU win this game. They beat number one Duke. This is number two Texas. That's what they did 20 years ago when they defeated the second seed Georgia Tech and the first seed Kentucky on their way to an amazing trip to the Final Four as the number 11 seed. And it was in this city in Atlanta at the Old Omni. Dale Brown's Tigers against the Wildcats of Kentucky 59-57 advancing to the Final Four for the third time in school history to be defeated by Purvis Ellison and Louisville, the eventual champions. Davis misses the free throw. Davis gets the rebound. Is that something we saw before against Duke? Well, we're looking at one of the best free throw rebounding teams in the country in LSU. And there's something else, Jay Billis, about beating Duke in the tournament in the Sweet 16. The last five teams that have beaten the Blue Devils in the 16s have all won the next round to go to the Final Four, and that's what LSU is trying to do today. Well, a good omen for LSU, and they have earned every ounce of this lead. Mitchell looks for his eighth point. That was a big bucket. Makes it a three-point game. Tyrus Thomas going to try it again. Lazar out. Three possession game now for Texas. We'll need the three point plays. LSU doesn't want to foul now. Well, you got to guard that three point line and challenge a shot, but they cannot allow any fouls. Abrams to Buckman is off with a three. Rebound. Thomas foul. Either Buckman or Aldridge, they were both reaching in. The signed look from Rick Barnes. As we remind you again, the Bruins and the Tigers, UCLA and Memphis, looking for their ticket to the Final Four as they play out in Oakland. 10 after 7 Eastern time, the start of that game. We're closing in on 7 o'clock here in the East as Tyrus Thomas one of the superstars of this tournament. Ian Davis will fight for the MVP, but unable to hit the free throw. Clock runs. 45 seconds to go. Abrams. Got to get it up quickly. Almost banked in. A one-handed rebound by Tasman Mitchell and the immediate foul by Texas. You know, Dick, they say that college basketball is a guards game, and you've got to have guards to win. But LSU is advancing because of their front court. Their big guys have just dominated this game start to finish. That look of John Brady almost swallowing a smile as if to say, I can't believe these young kids of mine. They have just been terrific, and they are. They're so close. They're just like a family. And uh, Brady says, sometimes I have no control. <laughs> they just uh, take care of things themselves. And they said that in a good way, that they just monitor each other. They have so much uh, passion for one another. Well, they were hardly tight yesterday. This is one loose group that has an awful lot of fun together. And it's easy to have fun when you're winning, but this team really works hard and works hard together. Double bonus, and Tasman Mitchell hits that free throw. And a nine-point lead. It's amazing about these Tigers. It was late in the game that they took Duke apart. When the Devils had taken a five-point lead in that second half. And there's the three as P.J. Tucker goes outside to bang home a tray. 24.6 seconds left. 37 for 12 in the game. In the big baby and the foul quickly. Only a second used and Davis will walk to the other end. Five for eight in overtime from the charity. 
Davis, the Southeastern Conference Player of the Year as a sophomore. After being freshman of the year a season ago. He's got so much moxie and Bob Pettit the, the great All-American looking at this uh, young star of the Tigers today with great appreciation. Well, this if they can hang on this might have been unexpected to an awful lot of people but I think there may be have been some expectations among these LSU players that they were good enough to get to the final four they believe Davis who chipped in a three point shot he's made only six all season under the pressure of this overtime ball knocked aside 15 seconds left action continues here on CBS the regional finals from Oakland it'll be the Bruins and the Tigers of Memphis one and two seeds and turn over to LSU on a bad pass by the Longhorns and how about LSU Dick staying aggressive not taking anything for granted still going after it and Ken Paulino with the foul now Daryl Mitchell gets to walk to the free throw line put another couple of points in his column John Brady like so many coaches today his roots in a small college program Bellhaven in the NAIA in Jackson Mississippi where he scored uh, over a thousand points as a guard and Rick Barnes also from a small school Lenore Ryan and Hickory North Carolina Daryl Mitchell the only real long term experience on this LSU roster the senior all the rest of the kids that play are freshmen and sophomores and he's been unflappable. He's hit big shot after big shot all season long. Had game winners. He had a game winner against Arkansas early in the season against West Virginia. And then, of course, that huge game winner in the second round against Texas A&M. That's how close it's been. A&M is that shot away from their chance to advance. Well, it's time running out on the Longhorns. They'll battle to the end, but a, a miracle shot by Tucker won't go down. Back out with three seconds. Tucker will take another. He misses. And get ready, Indianapolis. Big Baby and Brady's Bunch are coming to the Final Four. Time game and LSU prevails. Let's go to Greg Gumbel in New York after this message.